Hey, what's up everyone? I wanted to do a quick video. Um, I'm working on a new waste board for my machine. Uh, the old one was worn out, needed was time for a new, um, some new MDF. Um, I want to go over something that I do with each one of my machines and uh, it's creating bump stops. Some people uh, have different ways of doing bump stops. The way I do it, which was recommended to me a while ago and I wish I could remember who it was, but it's to me it's the best way to do it. It's consistent and you're relying on your machines um, X and Y. So you're relying on your machines accuracy to create a bump stop that will allow you to carve uh, different signs, flags, whatever you're carving. It'll allow you to carve these and get straight lines so your material isn't crooked on your wasteboard. Um, you know, X Carve, when they used to send out their machines, they send they would send out a wasteboard that had grid lines on it. And people would be like, why is my car crooked? I don't understand it. I use the grid line. Well, you're relying on the wasteboard instead of the machine to tell you uh, if you're straight or not. So this is a method that I use. It's simple. Um, doesn't take long to do it. It just takes a little bit of tools, um, a little bit of um, simple design work in, uh, in easel. Um, I mean, I use Aspire, but um, I, I still use easel as a sender. It's super easy to use for me. I'm comfortable with it. I haven't had any issues, maybe once in three years. Um, so all you easel haters, I'm an easel hater as far as design work goes, but as a sender, it works fine. Um, so I'm gonna turn turn around and show you guys the, uh, I'm gonna turn around and show you the waste board that I just did. I'm gonna show you a few things that I did to it and, um, and I'll kind of go over a little bit more with it. All right, so I just put, I just put a new waste board on here. Um, some of you might be asking, why am I using two layers of MDF when I have this really super expensive, fancy aluminum waste board? Uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, if I was to do it all over again, I wouldn't do that. It's it's one, it's heavy. Two, it's kind of limiting on what you can do. Um, I like to screw my pieces into the waste board. The clamps were always getting in the way. I kept hitting it with the dust boot um, but anyhow so i uh i took my old pieces off and i put two layers of mdf down and one of the first things that i do is i set myself up bump stops now all these are are just little pieces of oh that one's in there good they're all in there pretty tight all it is 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 uh pieces of uh three eighths dial um what I do is I go into Aspire. This can probably be done in easel just as easily. Um, but I create a row of circles or holes that way and holes this way. And I'll send the, the uh, tool path. I mean, you can see here. I mean, this is what my G code looks like. And this is my Aspire, just a, just an array. Um, I created an array and then got rid of what I didn't need. So I just use an, an eighth inch bit and I let the machine drill the holes into the waste board. And then I take the dowel and basically you just stick it in the hole like that. And then you use something like this to push up against it. And then I just use my multi-tool to trim it off. Um, what this allows is taking your piece and bringing it down here to this corner and look, I mean, it's right up against it this way and it's right up against it that way. And the reason I do this is because my machine drilled these holes. So it went straight that way and straight that way. So that should theoretically mean that if I'm doing any kind of carving, it's gonna be straight this way and straight that way. I used to have an issue with the bump stops that you would make and screw to your waste board not being perfectly straight. Uh, I was relying on um, me measuring and creating, you know, getting the perfect right angle. And, and 
I would cut a flag and I'd cut a border on the flag and then the border would be all jacked up and I would just get super pissed. Um, but basically this is it. You got just a dowel, this, you can use one of these if you have one of these. I use my multi-tool and, uh, and that's it. I mean, that's that, that gets you uh consistency. And then, and then the other thing that I do, and the reason I do this is because I use this right here, this, uh, little guy fits perfectly on this corner. Um, I zero my, my Y, my Z here, I zero my Z here. And I set my X, Y to this corner. Now I'll set my X, Y to this corner in easel and every carve, I'll just reuse previous X, Y, unless I need to, unless I'm doing a carve that obviously needs to change it. Like if I'm doing a circle and I want to carve in the middle, but if I'm doing something like this, where I have a rectangle or a square or a piece of plywood or whatever, and I know, um, you know, that I'm going to start in the corner. I don't ever change my X, Y in easel. I mean, it's the same thing over and over and over again. When I go to carve on this piece, I'll have to, this is my first one, my first carve. I'll have to go in here and change my X, Y to here. But then every carve, I just probe right off of this. I don't even use the three sides. I like this because it's got the little lips on it, so it fits perfectly. And I just probe, I probe in the same spot on this every time. Um, I haven't quite figured it out on this one, but I will probably go up like one inch and over one inch for every carve and it'll probe in the same spot. And so I just, I do that for consistency. So when you're doing multiple bit cars and you're going from, uh, you know, a, a, an end mill to a V, a V bit, you know, I always, uh, carve, uh, sorry, I'm not keeping the camera straight. Um, I will carve my clearance pass and then I'll rehome it and then I'll do the same steps one inch up, one inch over or whatever it's going to be probe in the same spot. That way I know that the V bit is going to hit the same spot that the end mill did. Um, and so for each carve, that's what I do. And uh, I've been pretty lucky with it. I haven't really had any issues. So Anyhow, I just wanted to share a tip that, uh, that I learned a long time ago that I thought might help you guys, especially if you're new to um, a CNC machine. Hope it helps. Y'all take care.